This is Middle East Matters on France 24. I'm Hal Mohideen. Coming up in today's show, the offensive in Mosul continues with liberated residents celebrating their newfound freedom. We meet the firefighters battling the scorched earth tactics of the Islamic State group. And the new clubbing destination could well be Cairo as underground musicians start making their mark on the scene. But first to Syria, where the operation to retake rebel-held Aleppo continues apace. The advantage may be swinging towards the Syrian government, but the losers in this conflict remain the civilian population. Figures released by the UN this week show some 16,000 people displaced by the fighting. One medic said there was an intense fear of collective annihilation in eastern Aleppo, with food stocks almost exhausted and no functioning hospitals in the area. Well, another government-led offensive to retake key cities is underway in Iraq. The four-week-long operation in the north has freed more than a third of eastern Mosul, and residents are starting to celebrate after years of living under brutal Islamic State group rule. It's a newfound freedom for the residents of the district of al qadra in Mosul. Here, Iraqi soldiers are hailed as heroes. They've just recaptured several neighborhoods from the Islamic State group, mainly in the eastern parts of the city. Today, the people have welcomed us with cheers and sweets, and you might have seen their feelings in general. We know that they have achieved half the victory because they gave us information, cooperated with us and committed to the instructions given by the fighting units. A cooperation with locals that enabled the Iraqi army to oust Islamic State group militants from these parts of the country's second largest city in just a few days. The fighting was fierce. Some corpses are still lying on the ground. But residents are eager to start over and to see their town come back to life. The shops have started to open and life has begun to go back to normal. God willing, we are advancing step by step. Our district as well as the neighborhood of Aden have been cleared. With air and ground support from the US-led coalition, Iraqi soldiers and Kurdish Peshmerga forces are trying to consolidate gains in other parts of Mosul. Iraqi forces fear jihadists are hiding amongst the civilians. So once a quarter has been liberated, every man is taken in for questioning. Rights groups like Amnesty International say the dragnet for IS members has fallen too wide. They also accuse Iraqi forces of torturing and arbitrarily detaining thousands of civilians who have escaped areas controlled by the Islamic State group. Well, staying in Iraq and another less well-known battle rumbles on behind the scenes. The fight against fire. AFP's Linda Abiyasa meets the firefighters working round the clock near Mosul to protect Iraqis from the scorched earth tactics deployed by IS militants. White sheep turning black here in the outskirts of Kayara, south of Mosul. It's the result of the massive cloud of smoke hanging in the air ever since retreating Islamic State group fighters set fire to dozens of oil fields nearby. A bid to slow government forces advancing on Kayara as they press towards Mosul. Local shepherd Haider depends on his herd to earn a living. No one buys these sheep at the market because they've all turned black. Though set alight as far back as August, some of the blazes have yet to be put out, with wells still belching columns of toxic black fumes. Oil engineers, firefighters and police officers have been working non-stop to extinguish the flames, pumping water into this burning well. I came to this field to try my best to be responsible, to help my brothers of the North Oil Company put out the fires in these wells and save the civilians and the people of this area who are suffering from the brutality of the Islamic State group. They're like cancer. They've completely destroyed Iraq's infrastructure. Putting out the fires has proved complicated and dangerous. Police first check for mines left by the militants at the mouth of the wells. The whole process can take up to a month. 
and only two of 19 burning oil wells have so far been extinguished. Concerns also mounting for the health of residents in nearby villages, most of whom have chosen to remain in their homes. It affects my lungs. For the past three days I've been taking medication because of the smoke. This also affects the environment and the planet. It's destroyed everything. The UN's environmental program says crude oil fires produce a wide range of pollutants, including soot and gases that can cause skin irritation and shortness of breath. Putting residents at serious risk in Kayara, where these billowing columns of thick black smoke have become the backdrop to daily life. Well, it's time now for a look at what's trending online across the Middle East. And Julia Seeger is with us today. Hello to you, Julia. Hello. We're going to start off with the mannequin challenge, which has reached the front lines in Iraq. Absolutely. The challenge was undertaken by Iraqi soldiers in Mosul, who took time out of their ISIS fighting schedule, I guess, to pose on the outlook atop a building in the city, as you can see here. It's, of course, a video that has sparked much public outcry, at least on social media. Now, there's another controversial mannequin challenge that was created and this time by the Syrian White Helmets. They're a volunteer organization in Syria. You can see two of their workers frozen um, in the midst of a rescue while there's an actor there pretending uh, to be trapped under some rubble. The White Helmets explained later on that they created this video because they were trying to spread awareness about the horrors happening in and around the besieged city of Aleppo. But later they were forced to apologize because the content of this video was deemed inappropriate and offensive. Let's move to Egypt. Egypt now, where the government wants to create crocodile farms to control the number of reptiles in Lake Nasser. That's right. It's a fascinating story. Uh, crocodiles were frequently hunted in Egypt until the 1950s, and they almost completely disappeared from the Nile River. Uh, but in the last couple of decades, many fishermen insist that the reptile has made uh, more than a healthy comeback. And the problem now is the opposite. There are too many crocodiles in Lake Nasser. Now, how did this happen? Well, the Lake Nasser uh, is actually a huge reservoir was, that was created when uh, the Aswan High Dam was built in 1964. And the dam has stopped crocodiles from e being able to cross over to the Nile River. It's also um, retained a lot of the fish, so crocodiles have lots of fish to eat, and that's why the population is growing. Now, according to the government, today there are 3,000 uh, crocodiles in Lake Nasser. They're a threat not only to men, but also to the environment. And to mm -hmm. counter this threat, well, the Egyptian Ministry of Environmental Affairs wants to create so-called crocodile farms to control their number, of course, but also to make money off of it. You can use their skin, of course, to make boots and, and, and purses. You can also use uh, their meat. You can make uh, crocodile steaks. But there's also crocodile oil, which is a very important ingredient right now for the cosmetic industry. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, really one of the best remedies for dry skin. It's derived from its fat. And you may have heard of it without knowing it. It's called repticillin. Now, there are also animal defense groups that have expressed concern over the creation of these farms, uh, and mainly on the grounds of animal cruelty. Let's finish with a quick word now on Saudi Arabia, where some women are dropping the niqab. That's right. Many Saudi women are now opting for the Islamic veil. It's a veil that covers the hair, and sometimes they even leave a strand of hair. Uh, it's a growing phenomenon that's gained speed in the last few years, but it was uh, very striking at the MISC Global Forum in Riyadh. It's an event for uh, young people. And this is something relatively new, uh, Hala, especially in the landlocked um, capital of Riyadh that's very conservative. Uh, it's also uh, a sign that the religious police is losing ground because these women are, are able to, to wear these, these veils. But the change taking place in Saudi Arabia is not just about the veil. Uh, in late September, 15,000 women signed a petition and sent it to the government asking for the end of man guardianship. Today, Saudi women have to have uh, a male guardian and they have to have their consent to be able to get married or even to have access to health care. Oh, golly. Certainly something to keep an eye on. Thanks so much for the, that. Sure. Julia Seeger taking us through what's trending online across the region. Let's move on to some cultural news now. And Cairo used to be the capital of the Middle Eastern film scene. Now it's the go-to place for underground music and club talent. Mustafa Abdelez and Linda Belasi introduce us to the new wave of Egyptian talent. In this club in downtown Cairo, musicians Ahmed Saleh and Abdullah Minyawi play their electronic beats to a swaying crowd. 
The duo are part of a wave of new talent that has surged onto Egypt's underground music scene in recent years, sometimes infused with traditional Egyptian sounds. There is movement in the music scene. There's a lot of collaborations, a lot of concerts, and a lot of possibilities for more exposure. The movement began in the mid-2000s, when musicians bypassed record labels to reach their listeners directly online. This also led to the birth of a new type of music called maharaganat. Emerging from working-class neighborhoods, it became Egypt's most listened to genre. Using cheap or free software, these musicians mix traditional Egyptian music with electronic sounds, creating loud, eclectic beats. These songs are now the most played at weddings. It's the only thing they play. At the beginning, people were against us. Then we imposed our style, and now everyone listens to Maraganat, old and young alike. Rami Abadir released his first official album with Canadian record label DMT Records in May, also using the internet to publish and promote his music. Even if I can't get proper devices, I can download cheap software online and start making music. I can learn from the internet or by experimenting or with the help of friends. Egypt's 2011 uprising, which toppled longtime dictator Hosni Mubarak, boosted the movement, creating a security void which made it easier to open spaces and organize festivals. While many venues promoting new and experimental music have since closed, several still hold regular live sessions. And other artists in the region, including from Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan, have joined up with them to collaborate. And finally, where can you find Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, Usain Bolt, and Julie Roberts? In the brand new Madame Tussauds, which has just opened in Istanbul. Well, curators are hoping that the mix of local and international celebrities will lure tourists in from far and wide. And with that, we leave you in this edition. We're back at the same time next week. See you then.